Good morning and God bless you. Welcome to the virtual worship service for the Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ in Atlanta, Georgia. I am Bishop Designate Arthur F. Mosley, the pastor of Cathedral of Faith Church of God in Christ in Atlanta. I am overjoyed that you are here with us as we worship the true and living God, the Lord Jesus Christ. We're getting ready to go into worship, but before we go into worship, I have just a few observations I want to share with you. Let me say thank you again to all of our volunteers and all of those who are showing up to participate and be blessed by the food giveaway, the food box giveaway every Thursday at 8 a.m., and also on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Thank you so much, volunteers. Let's continue to provide the people with this much needed ministry. And those of you that need a box, come on by. You need to bless somebody else, come on by. Thursdays, 8 a.m., Saturday at 11 a.m. Invite a soul to be with us on Tuesday night. Those of us who have been there, on Tuesday night for the month of March, we know that we have been immensely blessed by the teaching and the ministry of our guest, Dr. Eric Grayo from North Carolina. It has been a wonderful week of, a, of studying and overviewing the Bible, both Old and New Testament, seeing the Bible as a whole text and seeing that common thread and that major theme of the Bible. It has been absolutely marvelous. But this Tuesday, Tuesday of this week, March 30, March 30th, we are going to be blessed by Dr. Grayo actually taking your questions and answering your questions live. Look, you can get your questions in early. Email them to ask at cogic.org. Email your question. That way yours is up front and we'll be sure to get to your question. Thank you for sending your COVID-19 victory recovery testimony. Absolutely amazing things that God has done for his people. And I look forward to sharing those testimonies with you real, real soon. And uh, I, I want you to know you're going to be blessed. I will share them on April 6th at 7 p.m. right here. Parents, again, if your child, your student could be blessed and benefited by tutoring, then Cathedral of Faith has tutoring available. We are making tutoring available for your student. Just email us your name as the parent, your child's name, your child's grade, as well as the subjects, subjects that your child could use some additional help with. We're coming to the end of the school year. Some schools will go even into the summer. We want our children to be prepared and we are willing to come alongside of you and your child to ensure that they have help that will help them to do well academically. Congratulations um, to Bishop Hogan and Mother Tucker for an absolutely splendid workers meeting on last week. Thank you so much for your leadership and what you're providing. North Central Georgia, you are, in one, you are a wonderful jurisdiction. Thank you, saints, for participating on last week, Saturday, actually yesterday, participating in the park and pray and picking up communion elements and your palm leaves. And especially, I want to thank those who took time to deliver to our senior members the elements for communion as well as the palm leaves. God will not forget your labor. And it is just absolutely amazing what we're able to accomplish for God's glory when we work together. Join us right here for Good Friday. Put it in there. Come on, post it now. Put it in the atmosphere. Good Friday, Good Friday, April 2nd, 7 p.m. Seven last words in song. It's going to be unique. It's going to be inspiring. It's going to be uplifting. So be right here with us on Friday, April 2nd at 7 p.m. Easter program. Our children have been working. They've been preparing. It's going to be a virtual experience, but it's going to be a great experience for, um, for us as well as for our children. So let's provide them with an audience on Resurrection Sunday. April 4th at 8.30 a.m. Right here, right back here for Good Friday, right back here for uh, Resurrection Sunday as well. 
Hashtag Cathedral Cares. Our focus this week is salvation. We want people to be saved. And we care about those who are not saved, who have not developed that relationship with the Lord Jesus. And we want them to be saved. So submit their names. Email their names to us. And we will join you in prayer. Let's pray for the lost this week. Let's pray that the Lord will use us to minister God's plan of salvation to those who are still living in darkness. He is a savior. He does redeem. He does forgive. And he can use us to bring that redemptive, life-saving message to his people. Well, it's time to go into worship. Stay right here. Like, share, subscribe on YouTube, and allow your heart and your mind to be fully connected and engaged as we worship the Lord. Right. 
Paz. you thank God for what he is giving us in the midst of this worship service on this morning and what he's allowing us to give back to him in praise and worship thank God for first lady Mosley thank God for our music ministry and the, the media team and all of those who are working to ensure that we have an excellent experience in worship but not only us because worship is not about us Worship is about the Lord God Almighty. So in a few moments, we're going to go right back into the sanctuary and continue with worshiping the Lord. We know that prayer works. We know that prayer is powerful. I shared a time 
with our men in ministry, our elders and our ministers, uh, just on last week. And we talked about how the scripture tells us, if any are sick among us, let them call for the elders of the church. The elders of Cathedral of Faith, the ministers of Cathedral of Faith, uh, those who are in ministry, we are praying for you. We want you to put your prayer requests in right now. And there are men and women who are part of this ministry who love the Lord Jesus Christ, who will begin to pray for your request right now as you put it in. Come on, post it, even there on YouTube, Facebook Live. There is nothing too hard for God. He is able. Come on, put it there and let's watch God give you your miracle. We're going back into the worship service at this time. Stay right here because there is a word from the Lord. Following the sermonic selection, we will hear today's message. Come on, we came to lift up the name of Jesus. Remember God cares. God cares for you. And when you're in doubt and you can't find your way out, he will see you through. See you through. See you through. Just call. Just call the name of Jesus. Just call. Just call the name of God.
you and thank you again for being with us in this worship experience on this morning. We thank God for First Lady Mosley and our music ministry and all who are assisting to make, to make sure that we have an excellent worship experience together, giving glory to our Lord on this Palm Sunday. Let us go to the word of the Lord in Luke chapter 19. Verses 36 to 40. Luke 19, verses 36 to 40. I'll be reading from the ESV, English Standard Version of the Bible. And the word of the Lord reads, And as he rode along, they spread their cloaks on the road. And as he was drawing near, already on the way down the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of his disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice why for all the mighty works that he had done that they had seen saying blessed is the king who comes in the name of the lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest and some of the pharisees in the crowd said to him teacher rebuke your disciples he answered i tell you if these were silent the very stones would cry out. Thank God for the reading and the hearing of his word. I pray that the Lord will minister to us from these few verses. I want to talk to you this morning from the subject, unstoppable praise. Unstoppable praise. There are many things about the Lord that are absolutely amazing. You must confess that the Lord, he is wonderful, mighty, splendid, incredible. The Lord is creator, sustainer, faithful. He's good. He's kind. He's savior. He's keeper. Oh, yes, it is our Lord who is our provider, protector. He restores. He's powerful. He's wise. Our Lord is without error. He's faultless. He's flawless. He's perfect. He is 
good. And I could go on and on talking about the uniqueness and magnificence of our Savior. But as a way of summary, I would say this. He is great. Can you put that in the atmosphere? He is great. The Lord is great. We see this confirmed in Psalms 137 verse number 5. For I know that the Lord is great and that our God is above all gods. Notice the psalmist says, I know. He's saying, I found out, discovered, I understand, I've learned that this is who he is. Can I say that again? The psalmist is declaring that he has learned that this is who he is. The psalmist is aware of this fact. I have come to this the conclusion that my God is great. Great means he's remarkable. He's out of the ordinary. I love the song that says and it searched all over. Couldn't find nobody. I looked high and low. Still couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. You ought to put it in the atmosphere. Nobody greater the Old Testament prophet Isaiah got a glimpse, only a glimpse of the Lord's greatness. See this glimpse in Isaiah chapter 6. Please indulge me, allow me, be patient with me. As I read verses 1 through 5, in the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, and with two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, with two he flew, and one called to another and said, Holy, Holy Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundation of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called. And the house was filled with smoke. And I said, woe is me for I am lost. For I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts was certain the Lord is great just put it in the atmosphere again you can just use one word great 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 in addition I am in awe of the fact that the Lord is consistent did you hear that? He is consistent. We don't have to worry about him being one way today and then another way on tomorrow. He is steady, dependable, constant, and reliable. I love what the Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 40, starting at verse 28 through verse 31. Has thou not known, has thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth fainted not, neither is weary. There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might. He increases strength. Even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. The Bible Bible keeps talking about the consistency of God in Malachi chapter 3 verse number 6 that says for I am the Lord I change not therefore ye sons of Jacob are not consumed please allow me to reference numbers 23 and 19 that further emphasizes the consistency of God God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent had he said and shall he not do it or hath he spoken and shall he not make it 
good. I'm so grateful that our Lord is consistent. He's not the only one who is to be consistent. There is a need. There is a call for us, for me and for you to be consistent. Find this call in James 5 and 12 that teaches us to let our yes be yes and our no be no. I hear this call for consistency in us. In Revelations 2 and 10 when Jesus gives his message to the church at Smyrna where he tells them in Revelations 2 and 10 be thou faithful unto death. And in our text from Luke 19 I see consistent praise and Jesus is triumphal entry. The praise is unstoppable. Our text centers around the closing week of Jesus' earthly ministry. Yes, he is headed to Calvary. But before going to the cross on this initial Palm Sunday, about two miles outside of Jerusalem, Jesus sends two disciples to a village to retrieve a donkey. They obey him. The owner of the donkey asks the disciples, why are you untying my donkey? Their answer is simple, precise, and to the point. They simply say, the Lord has need of it. Please catch that. They simply tell him what Jesus told them to tell as their answer, the Lord has need of of it. Oh, nothing more is indicated. No persuasive speech, no argument, no overwhelming reluctance, no lecture from the owner about getting the donkey back in reasonable time without damage. The Lord needed it and the owner gave it. Catch that. The Lord needed it and the owner gave it. Such simple obedience and a willing response should categorize to categorize, characterize our relationship with the Lord. If we have it and the Lord needs it, we should let him have it. As Jesus moves towards Jerusalem riding on a donkey, looking like a king, treating him like a king with the palm branches, with the carpet of clothes, he is actually fulfilling the prophecy of Zechariah 9 and 9. Also, he's on the verge of fulfilling his atonement assignment. He's on the verge of fulfilling his atonement atonement assignment atonement atonement uh, is to permanently and completely heal repair restore our fractured and broken relationship with God. Uh, atonement is to cover and to cleanse. Atonement is to pay uh, the sin debt. Atonement uh, is making forgiveness possible and uh, to ransom. You know what the hymn says. Uh, what can wash away uh, my sin? What can make me uh, whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Somebody put it in the atmosphere the blood, the blood, the blood. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, 18 and 19, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ. There's something about the blood, the blood of Christ is a lamb without blemish and without spot. As Jesus enters this phase of his purpose, riding ah, to Jerusalem, the people collectively and in the spirit of unity give him praise. He has gone to Jerusalem many times, but on those past visits, it was dominated with opposition and tension. He showed up, but looked like when he would show up, there would be 
intention. But in this moment, there is perpetual, unstoppable praise. I know that we have gathered from all over and all of us are facing something. We could whine and complain and cry. But can we for the next few seconds in this virtual service, in this pandemic, can we just praise the Lord right where you are? Give him a praise. That's it. That's it. That's it. Come on now. You praise him. You praise him. Praise, praise, praise is to call attention to who he is. Praise is to call attention to what he has done. Ah, praise is to give him glory. I know this praise puts all the attention on the Lord and not on us and what we are going through. In praise we bless him and exalt him. In praise we extol and glorify. In praise we magnify and thank him. The praise, the praise in our text, the praise is vibrant. The praise is strong. The praise is passionate. The praise is consistent. And the praise is unstoppable. The enemy found out that Job's praise could not be stopped. There were those who wanted to stop this praise in Luke 19. But they found in their effort, the enemy been trying to stop your praise. And it may not be as strong as it used to be. But thank God you still got your praise. So in the text, what is it that made the praise an unstoppable praise? First thing that made the praise unstoppable is the praisers recall what Jesus had already done. You may be waiting on him to do something else. You may have already given your prayer request and made your petition and still waiting on something to be done. But you know he's already done some things in your life. Where is the recall in our text? It's in verse 37 of Luke 19. It says, and when he was come nigh, when he was nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples begin to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. Why? For all the mighty works that they had seen. The mighty works mean there were signs and wonders, miracles that were manifested that manifested his great power uh, proving his authority uh, clarifying uh, that he is able uh, and the things had already been done uh, to show them he's able he is an able God. He is a mighty God. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all. We think or ask according to the power that works in us. The Bible tells us they had seen these things. It was their their observance and their experience. They knew it for themselves. It was their reality. What are some of the mighty things, some of the miracles that were done by Jesus that manifested his great power, which the praisers knew to be a reality. They remembered and they were able to recall he turned water into wine. He raised the widow 
own son from the dead. Uh, he fed the 5,000. Uh, he healed the paralyzed. Uh, he healed Peter's mother-in-law. Uh, he healed the centurion servant. Uh, he healed the crippled. Uh, he healed the withered hand. Uh, he healed the woman with the issue of blood. Uh, he gave sight to the blind. Uh, he caused the deaf to hear. Uh, he delivered the woman uh, that was bound 18 years. Uh, he cast down devils. Uh, they recalled. Uh, he gave Jairus uh, his dead daughter back. Uh, he stilled the storm. Uh, and just recently, uh, he raised Lazarus uh, from the grave. Uh, please, uh, don't ever forget uh, what the Lord has done. Uh, the Bible, uh, the Bible says, Psalms 103, uh, bless the Lord, uh, oh my soul, uh, and all that's within me, uh, bless, uh, bless, uh, bless his holy name, uh, bless the Lord, oh my soul, uh, and forget not, did y'all hear that, uh, and forget not, not, uh, all his benefits. Uh, Jesus, uh, I'll never forget uh, what you've done for me. Uh, unstoppable praise. Uh, it recalls and remembers uh, what the Lord has already done. Uh, the second thing that made the praise unstoppable uh, is the praisers. Uh, focused uh, on who Jesus is. Uh, did you hear what I said? Uh, they focused uh, not on Pilate, uh, not on the Roman emperor, uh, not on the high priest, uh, but they focused on Jesus and who he is I see the focus in verse 38 of Luke 19 where you find these words saying blessed is the king that's who he is the king who comes in the name of the Lord king in the cage they treated him like a victorious king not a defeated king not an overthrown king but a king with victory by using their clothes to make a carpet waving the branches waving the palm leaves king indicates he rules he reigns he is sovereign and he has authority at his birth, the wise men came seeking the one born king, king of the Jews. He's more, more than a carpenter, more than a teacher more than a historical figure uh, more than a religious personality uh, he's more than a rabbi uh, Paul said uh, in 1 Timothy 6 uh, and 15 which in his time uh, he shall show uh, who is the blessed uh, and only potentate uh, the king of kings uh, and the lord of lords uh, unstoppable praise uh, focuses uh, on who he is uh, he is a wonder in my soul don't have time to sing it we have seen that unstoppable praise it focuses on who Jesus is unstoppable praise recalls what the Lord has already done third thing and the final thing I see in the text about unstoppable praise is that weapons uh, against the praise uh, they do not work uh, did you hear what I said uh, the weapons uh, that come against the praise uh, they don't work uh, you know uh, the enemy tried uh, to stop your praise uh, but put it in the atmosphere uh, it did not work unstoppable praise it's attacked 
hits is assaulted. It is hits. Unstoppable praise is criticized. It's condemned. It's argued against. Unstoppable praise. There's disagreement with it. It is harassed. All of this and more is done against it. But to no avail. Because Jesus, he defends. He defends the praise. I see it in verse 39 of Luke 19. And some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to Jesus, rebuke these praisers. Rebuke these worshipers. Jesus answered, I tell you, if they be quiet, if they hold their praise, the very stones will begin to cry out. Notice their request is to rebuke, strongly disapprove. They wanted Jesus to shut it down, condemn it, correct their wrong. But Jesus when I look at his life uh, he did rebuke some things uh, he rebuked demons he rebuked fever he rebuked storms uh, but he refused uh, to rebuke praise uh, can I say it again uh, he refused uh, to rebuke praise uh, what is Jesus saying uh, he is saying uh, I will be praised uh, somebody gonna praise me uh, somebody gonna give me glory uh, if you don't praise me uh, if the religious don't praise me uh, Somebody is going to give me praise. I'm so glad that Jesus defends the praise. When you can't defend it yourself, he will defend it. No weapon formed against you, formed against your praise. It will not prosper. Lord, I thank you. Unstoppable praise is defended defended by Jesus, the Lord himself, oh my God, for him to defend, to stand for the praise, for him to protect the praise, it tells me he defends the praiser, because without the praiser, there is no praise. So in order to have the praise to be under protection, he's got to protect the praiser. I'm so glad I am a praiser. He's defending me. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Tremaine Hawkins said, and Brooklyn Tab said, I've lost some good friends a long life away. Some loved ones departed in heaven to stay. But thank God, I didn't lose everything. I've lost faith in people who said they cared in the midst of my crisis. They were never there. But in my disappointment, in my season of pain, one thing never wavered. One thing never changed. I never lost my hope. I never lost my joy. I never lost my faith but most of all most of all I never 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 lost my praise in my closet now for many yeah that are in the text their praise was temporary yeah because it's just a few days after the praise in the text the same crowd moved from praise to abandonment they moved from praise to abuse they moved from praise to attack they moved from praise to rejecting Jesus they stopped recalling what he did they stopped 
focusing on who he is. They forgot his defense for the praise and the praiser. I don't want my praise to be temporary. Can I say it again? I, I don't want my praise to be temporary. He deserves, he deserves so much more than momentary, brief passing, fleeing and fading praise. But I want to be like David when David said in Psalm 34, I will bless the Lord at all times his praise. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. I welcome you. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. I want to say it again. I invite you. Magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his together. What praise, what praise can I give, can I offer every day at all times? What praise doesn't require Hebrew, Greek, Aramaic? What praise does not require being in a church building? What praise like having Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. If you've never opened the door of your heart, I invite you, I compel you to receive Jesus today. Repeat this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry for everything I've done, said, and thought outside of your will. Lord Jesus, I open the door of my heart. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. By faith, my sins are forgiven. By faith, Jesus lives in my heart. Welcome to the family of God. You are a child of God. You are born again. You are a praiser. And you can praise him now and forevermore. If you receive Jesus today, email us. Let us know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. If you need a church home, we would be overjoyed to have you as a part of our church family. That's right. Even in this pandemic, you can come and be a part 
of our church family. Just email us and we would be overjoyed to have you. God bless you. I trust you've been blessed by the word of the Lord. I have something I want to do with you. Stay right here with me. Don't leave. Stay right here with me. You've received your palm leaf. Many of you came, received communion elements that we will use another Sunday. But you have those palm branches for this Palm Sunday. Get that palm branch. Get that palm branch. And I want you to find something. Oh, if you can't find something to write, to tie to it, what are you going to write on there? Your prayer request. What you want the Lord to do. What you're believing him to do. Because that waving of the palm branch for me indicated victory. They believed that victory was theirs in Jesus Christ. And I want you to know today, victory is ours. Come on, put that prayer request down. Uh, come on, come on, secure it to there. Tape it on there if you have to. Or just write it on the leaf. Come on, just write it down. Uh, on there uh, and I'm going to pray now while you're writing or if you've already put it on there just begin to wave it just begin to wave it as a sign of agreement a sign of faith uh, saying Lord I have victory Lord I believe you Lord I believe you're putting me in the place where my praise will continue uh, oh father in the name of Jesus on this Palm Sunday in the midst uh, of a continuing pandemic. Uh, oh God, you see the prayer request uh, of your people. And right now, uh, we offer these requests to you, Lord. Uh, in the name of Jesus, no doubt. Uh, there were those in that crowd saying thank you. Uh, but there were also those in the crowd uh, who needed you to work, who needed you to heal, uh, who needed you to deliver, who needed you to release miracle signs and wonders. Uh, and oh God, as we wave these palm leaves as we lift up our prayer request we ask you do it do it even now do it God do it do it do it do it God in the mighty name of Jesus rebuke the enemy bind him right now now. Oh God help us to praise you like it's already done, like it's here right now. In Jesus name. Thank God. Amen. Come on, give him a thank you praise. Come on, come on, thank him like it's already done. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Come on, thank him. Amen. We want you to sow and seed into the ministry. Uh, the instructions are coming for you right now. Uh, oh, the Lord is good to us. The Lord has released. The Lord has provided. Uh, in this offering time, in this moment uh, of sharing, oh, I want you to be liberal. Uh, there are the instructions. The instructions are right there for you. Uh, give as the Lord has blessed. Uh, come on, share with the ministry. Your time and your offering. Thank you for being so generous. Thank you for being so faithful in giving tithe and offering to the ministry. We thank you for being here. Please be with us on Tuesday night and right back here on Sunday morning. The Lord bless you. Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday will be a great celebration. Let us look to the Lord. Father, we love you and honor you. We thank you uh, for this worship experience on today. Uh, Father, I pray uh, that your word has fallen on good ground uh, and that your people will be intentional and conscious uh, in giving you praise. Take our praise to the place uh, that is unstoppable uh, by the enemy. Uh, God, we go in your peace, your power, and your love. We go from this worship experience knowing we are never alone uh, and determined to give you the glory, the honor, the praise that is due your name. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. God bless you. Have an incredible week.